Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video will be all the books that I read in November, better known as my November wrap up. So hey, what's up, how are ya? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. November was actually a pretty good month. I am pretty happy with the books that I read and it was the last month of my night shift contract. So now I'm off, I'm done and it feels so good. The sun is so pretty. <laughs> and we're already into December, which is absolutely bananas. I cannot believe that the year is almost over. It honestly kind of feels like November didn't even happen. Like it feels like Halloween was last week. Before we get too far into the video, I want to thank our sponsor today, which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to help support new and emerging authors as well as help find readers books that they will love. Every single month, the Book of the Month team vets hundreds of new and early release titles, giving readers a curated selection so that we, as readers, can spend more time reading and less time researching. Probably my favorite thing about Book of the Month is that it is risk free. You can skip any month without being charged. There is no penalty, no nothing. If you do not love the choices for that month, you could just skip and then pick back up where you left off the next month. Book of the Month does right now ship only to US locations, but Book of the Month is the place to get the Brett breast. <laughs> book of the Month is the place to get the best price for a new release hardcover book. And this month they're doing something insanely special for the holiday season. You can use the code JOLLY through the link in my description and you will get your first box for $5. That is a super high quality hardcover book for $5. And December's picks are honestly some of my favorites. I'm pretty stoked about every single choice. <laughs> so let's go through them very quickly and then we will get on into the rest of the video. The first book on the list is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is her debut novel in which Chloe Davis is the daughter of a serial killer. He was arrested when she was 12 and Chloe and the rest of her family were left to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist and a local teenage girl goes missing and then another and that terrifying summer comes crashing back. Is she paranoid and seeing parallels that aren't really there? Or for the second time in her life, is she about to unmask a killer? The next book on the list is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Reviewers are saying that this book is spine chilling and beautifully created as it weaves a richly atmospheric adult debut following three residents of a secluded, seemingly peaceful commune as they investigate the disappearances of two outsiders. This book is hauntingly beautiful, hypnotic, and bewitching. A History of Wild Places is a story about fairy tales, our fear of the dark, and losing yourself within the wilderness of your mind. The next book on the list is Olga dies dreaming by Zochil Gonzalez. This is the story of an imperfect family shattered by secrets, grief, and abandonment, and also of people who will rise up, refusing to be broken. It's the tale of a status-driven wedding planner grappling with her social ambitions, absent mother, and Puerto Rican roots, all in the wake of Hurricane Maria. The next book on the list is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This book I'm actually reading this month with my patrons as a bonus buddy read. We're all very excited about it. <laughs> this book is a feel-good holiday rom-com about identical twins who swap lives 12 days before Christmas in hopes of holding their family's bustling bakery while also dealing with a stubborn ex. Will the twins' identity swap be a recipe for disaster or does it all have the right ingredients for getting their lives back on track? The next book on the list is Somebody's Daughter, a memoir by Ashley C. Ford. Somebody's Daughter steps into the world of growing up a poor black girl in Indiana with a family fragmented by incarceration and explores how isolating and complex such a childhood can be. As Ashley battles her body and her environment, she embarks on a powerful journey to find the threads between who she is and what she was born into and the complicated familial love that often binds them. And something else really cool about Book of the Month is that you can add up to two books in your box every single month. And the add-on that they sent me this month is John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed. These are essays on a human-centered planet. Funny, complex, and rich with detail, the reviews chart the contradictions of contemporary humanity. As a species, we are both far too powerful and not nearly powerful enough, a paradox that came into sharp focus as we faced a global pandemic that both separated us and bound us together. So again, you can click that link in my description and use the code JOLLY to get your first book for only $5. 
absolutely amazing. You should definitely jump on this deal. And with that said, let us get on into the video. But anyways, let us just start talking about the books that I read in November. There are six books. I'm going to talk about seven books, but I 100% completed six books in November. The seventh one that I want to talk about, maybe I should just like really quick mention it. Sure, why not? It's uh, The Well of Ascension by Brandy Sandy. Um, I only have this much to go. I have like maybe 75 pages left and I will finish it tonight. It is December 3rd. So technically I didn't finish it in November, but I don't really care. I, this is when I want to talk about it. Um, obviously I haven't finished it in its entirety yet, but I am pretty confident that it is going to be a four star read for me, which is fab. This is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy, if you didn't know. And this book, in my opinion, is very heavy on the political aspects of the story, which is exactly what I kind of expected, not only from my friends talking about the book, but also just how the last book ended. It was kind of going in a direction where it was going to be heavily focused on the politics and how to... How do I say this? <laughs> how do I say this without spoiling? <laughs> Fix things? <laughs> That's gonna have to do. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it felt really good to be in this world again after finishing The Final Empire. I read a lot of different books in between before I picked this one up and it felt good. It felt good coming back to these characters and I'm excited to go on to the third one, which is on my December TBR. So uh, we will see how that goes, but yeah, I am pretty confident that this is going to be a four star read for me. The next book that I wanna talk about is like, honestly one of my favorite books ever now. It could just be situational. I don't know if I think that it's like one of the best books I've ever read, but it might be. Like, I don't know. I had a great time reading this book. I I love this book. I really do. It's, it's The Once in Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. <laughs> and it's just, it was so good. When I say it might have been situational, it was, I say that because when I was reading this book, it was the very beginning of fall outside in the real world and all of the trees were starting to change colors. I have this really pretty Instagram picture that I posted that I still really love. <laughs> and in this book, it's just so fall. It is kind of dreary, but I don't know. It's fall, it's fall vibes and I was living fall vibes and it was just like the perfect situation. It was really fun. In this book, we have our three main characters, the Eastwood sisters, James Juniper, Agnes Amaranth and Beatrice Belladonna. And they've kind of grown up in a bad situation. They get separated from things that you learn about in the book, but eventually they find their way back to each other and they end up joining the suffragist movement in New Salem. However, they begin to pursue the forgotten words and ways that might turn this woman's movement into the witch's movement. And basically a lot of stuff happens. They have to delve into like really old deep magics, draw new alliances and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. And it was just so good. I love these sisters. I would die for them. I think that I would die for these characters. They feel like my own family, honestly. I loved them. And I just had a great time reading this book. Um, if you really enjoy fall witchy vibes with LGBT representation and a lot of feminist power, then this is a really good book for you because it's a really good book. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about that I read this month was Pet by Quake Mezzi. This book was fantastic. This was for sure. Oh, if you didn't know, obviously I gave uh, The Once in Future Witches five stars. Okay, anyways, moving on. This, this book, Pet, I also gave five stars. I think that this is a really important book. I think that it's fantastic that it exists and I think that Akweke Emezi is an absolutely incredible writer. This book explores so many like kind of darker topics. I'm pretty sure that it's a middle grade and it is written beautifully. The topics in this book are like really serious and real and the way that they write them are like the perfect amount of serious and real for a kid to read this book and get their wheels turning and help them realize that like, hey, society's it's pretty fucked up and we could change that. We can change how we think as a society, how we you know, how we go about things. And I just think that it's, it's amazing. I think that this book is definitely needed in every library. Basically in the story, we have our main characters, Jan and Redemption, and they live in a town called Lucille where monsters aren't real anymore. Like the monsters don't exist. However, a creature emerges from one of Jan's mother's paintings and it kind of forces her to rethink everything that she's ever been told. This creature gets named pet and and pet says that they have come to hunt a monster that is living in redemption's house and jan must fight not only to protect her best friend but also to uncover the truth and the answer to the question how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist 
and there's a lot of like really perfectly placed topics within the story that I I just I'm amazed. I'm amazed. They're 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 an incredible writer and and I would recommend this book as well. The next book that I read <laughs> was White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. Um this book, I heard that it's being turned into a movie, which is amazing. I think it's going to be terrifying <laughs> because this book was spooky. In this book, we follow our main character, Marigold, and her and her family are having to relocate from California to like this Midwestern town called Cedarville. And not only does the house that they're moving into have like a really sinister, weird past, but so does the town itself. And Marigold's stepsister, Piper, has this new like imaginary friend that wants Marigold gone and it's very sinister. This book is really like a modern day haunted house paranormal activity vibe and I I was spooked. It was spooky. I was listening to it and reading it with my eyeballs and I was honestly, I was sitting on the couch like this and I kept going like, no, 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 mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> because like I didn't want to know what was gonna happen but like obviously I was gonna know what was gonna happen and it was great. It was really good. Uh, Tiffany D. Jackson is also an incredible writer. If you enjoy spooky things, then you should definitely check this book out. Her twists and turns are pretty, pretty unmatched. They're very well placed. And I gave this book a four out of five. The next book that I read in November was The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I finally read it. I finally read a Britt Bennett. <laughs> um, it was the buddy read pick for my book club. I thought it was really good. Um, I don't actually remember much of it now that I'm like trying to think of what to say. I do remember that while I was reading it, I was never bored, but I wasn't always super interested, I guess I could say. I think it might have just been the pacing or just the topic of the book. I feel like I might have read something similar like this before. And let me just tell you what the book is about. In it, we have our main character, Nadia, who, who will most likely be the first kid in her family to go to college. But her mother has recently committed suicide, so she's been dealing with that. She's very very grief stricken and she's been taking up with the pa town pastor's son Luke. And from there the story kind of follows a secret. It begins with a secret then follows that secret through the lives of three different characters from high school into adulthood tracing its impact far beyond their Southern California youth. So it's Luke, Nadia, and then Aubrey who is one of Nadia's friends and they are full-fledged adults still shadowed by the choices they made in their youth and by the constant nagging question what if they had chosen differently? The possibilities of the road not taken are a relentless haunt. And in it, we have two main narrators. It's kind of like we follow Nadia for the most part, but then there's a different narrator and it's the mothers. The mothers are narrating. And I don't know if it's a spoiler of who, if I say who the narrators are or not, who the mothers are or not. So maybe I'll just not say it anything, but um, I didn't really love their point of view. Not until the end, the, like, it kind of became just like a big drama gossip filled thing. Thing, which I did enjoy, but for the most part, I was just kind of like annoyed. I just wanted to get back to the main part of the book and just get through it and see what was gonna happen. But yeah, like I didn't, I didn't not like it, but I didn't love it. So this one I gave like a three and a half out of five, which is still, was just still good. The next book that I read was The Wicker King by Kay Angfram. So really quick, let me read a little bit from the back and in the synopsis, and then I'll, I'll tell you some thoughts. So the back says, he didn't even know what to call it, this melting, thawing, calming burn. August is a mis misfit with a pyro streak and Jack is a golden boy on the varsity rugby team, but their intense friendship goes way back. It's something they keep for themselves and they rely on each other for survival. When Jack begins to see increasingly vivid hallucinations, August decides to help Jack the only way he knows how, by believing him, and believing in the fantasy kingdom that creeps into the edges of the real world. Jack leads August on a quest to fulfill a dark prophecy, and together they alienate everyone around them as they struggle with their sanity, free-falling into a surreal fantasy world that feels made for them. In the end, each of them must choose his own truth. So originally when I first read this synopsis, I was like, oh my god, that sounds amazing. It sounds like super magical, super like fantasy world. And it's not that it isn't a magical fantasy thing, but um, obviously it's part of the, the story that is a plot twist, so I'm not going to talk about it. But um, quickly realized that my original thoughts on what the book was going to be about was not it. 
but it was still fantastic. Like, I enjoyed that uh, realization that, like, it wasn't what I was expecting, because the way that it was going, I also still really, really loved. I really loved this book, though. I think that our characters were very, very real. Uh, the way that Kay Ingram wrote this book was not only very, like, vivid and almost atmospheric, but it was also, it, like I said, it's just real. It seems like a, like a real, an, real account of a real-life story, because it also kind of tied in some of those, like, surreal, magical elements to it because of what's going on, and I thought it was really good. I gave it a 4 out of 5. The last book that I read in the month of November was my Patreon book club pick of the month, which was Apple's Neville <laughs> Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. This book was a chunker. It was uh, honestly pretty long. What to say about this book? I, I liked it. I had a good time reading it. While I was reading it, obviously I was on night shift, so I read it pretty quickly because when I'm not working, Caleb's sleeping, so I have a lot of time, had a lot of time to be awake and just read a lot at one one time. So I was able to really like get into it and feel like I was living these kids' lives with them. But I also, I could understand why people might think that it's kind of slow or something. I don't know if people actually say that, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. So in this story, it's like a contemporary fiction mystery type type deal going on. It says, if your mother was missing, would you tell the police, even if the most obvious suspect is your father? That is the dilemma facing the four grown Delaney siblings. And the Delaney's are basically fixtures on the community. They have this tennis academy that they've been teaching anyone in the area um, to how to play tennis and how to get better at tennis. It's like coaching, basically. And obviously all four of these kids grew up playing tennis. They could have been great, but eventually they got burnt out. They didn't want to play anymore. Not all of them wanted to play anymore. But but their parents still continued to have this academy and coach whoever wanted to be coached. However, now everyone's grown and the parents are living alone and one night a stranger named Savannah knocks on Stan and Joy's door. Those are the parents' names. Bleeding after a fight with her boyfriend. The Delaney's are more than happy to give her the small kindness she sorely needs. If only that was all she wanted. Later, when Joy goes missing and Savannah is nowhere to be found, the police question the one person who remains, Stan, the husband. For someone who claims to be innocent, he, like many spouses, seem to have a lot to hide. Two of the Delaney children think their father is innocent. Two are not so sure, but as the two sides square off against each other in perhaps their biggest match ever, all of the Delaney's will start to re-examine their shared family history in a very new light. And it's it's good. It was a lot of drama. Like, there weren't too many amazingly shocking plot twists, but like, they all like ebbed and flowed pretty well. I was never bored. I was never like on the edge of my seat, so to say, but I was consistently having a good time. I really liked the dialogue between all of the four like Delaney kids and I kind of like related to them because I grew up playing competitive sports like my whole life so I know a lot of their feelings about tennis and like I, it wasn't tennis for me it was soccer and volleyball but the passion and burnout from a sport is like relatable to any sport and so like I felt some sort of kinship with some of the kids and I also just really liked their family dynamic even though it was really messy and kind of toxic in some ways I liked reading about it and I thought that it was very entertaining, especially sometimes there was just a lot of like a lot of drama when they all get together. It was just tense. It was just a lot of discourse back and forth and it was it was entertaining to say the least. So I ended up giving this a four out of five, but I believe that that's all I read in the month of November. Um, again, thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and don't forget to use the code JOLLY through the link in my description down below to get your first book for only five dollars. Five dollars! That's incredible. It's an incredible deal. You should definitely use that code through my link in the description. It's a great time to try out Book of the Month if you want to. But that is all that I have for you today, so thank you so much for watching. If you are still watching, then leave the bird emoji down below in the comments. <laughs> and while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support and of course be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye!